Before he became a music mogul with a billion-dollar empire, Jay-Z's life was shaped by the streets of Brooklyn, a place where survival often meant crossing lines that most of us would never dare approach. In this video, we take a journey through a story that is as shocking as it is inspiring, as we explore the complicated life of one of music's most iconic figures. Sean Carter, better known to the world as Jay-Z. This is a story not just of fame and fortune, but of crime, consequences, and the powerful lessons that can be learned from even the darkest paths. Sean Carter was born in the late 1960s, growing up in the infamous Marcy Projects of Brooklyn, New York. For anyone unfamiliar with the area, the Marcy Projects were known for one thing, survival of the fittest. Struggles, hardship, and a lack of opportunities were everyday realities, and young Sean was deeply affected by them. But he wasn't just any kid on the block. He was smart, intelligent, and ambitious. Jay-Z showed his intelligence and creativity at a young age through his talent for music. He was known for his ability to memorize and create rhymes. By the time he was in his early teens, he was already writing lyrics and performing freestyles for his friends. His ability to craft lyrics without writing them down, something he became famous for in his later career, was evident even as a young boy. This demonstrated both his intelligence and his creative ambition. Despite growing up in an environment where formal education may not have been emphasized, Jay-Z educated himself through music and culture. He was a fan of various genres, which shows his curiosity and hunger for knowledge beyond what was easily accessible in his surroundings. He learned how to navigate the music industry on his own, laying the foundation for his future success. Even as a teenager, Jay-Z showed signs of ambition and a business-oriented mindset. He was known to hustle and find ways to make money, which later translated into his ability to build a music career without traditional backing. His entrepreneurial spirit was also evident when he co-founded Rockefeller Records in the mid-1990s as a way to release his music independently, showcasing foresight and ambition from a young age. But in addition to these qualities, Jay-Z was angry. Angry at the circumstances he was born into, angry at the world that seemed to be against him. This anger would eventually lead him down a path that, at the time, seemed almost inevitable. Growing up in a home where his older brother Eric was facing personal challenges didn't help matters either. Eric was constantly at odds with the family, stealing from them to fuel his bad habits. For a young Sean, this created a storm of emotions. Frustration, betrayal, and perhaps worst of all, a sense of helplessness. And when you're living in an environment that pushes you into survival mode, that helplessness can easily morph into something far more dangerous. Rage. At just 12 years old, Jay-Z did something that would haunt him for the rest of his life. One day, after realizing that a prized possession, a ring, was missing, he confronted his brother Eric. He suspected Eric had stolen it, and as he angrily demanded answers, Eric's dazed and incoherent responses only fueled Sean's growing anger. What happened next is something that Sean would later describe as the darkest moment of his young life. In a fit of rage, he grabbed a firearm, something that was far too accessible in his world and fired at Eric in the shoulder. Let that sink in for a moment. A 12-year-old boy using a firearm against his own brother over a stolen ring. The gravity of the moment is hard to grasp even now. Imagine the fear, the confusion, the adrenaline coursing through his veins as he fled the scene, certain that his life was about to be over. But in a twist of fate, Eric didn't report the incident. No police were called, no charges were pressed. For reasons we can only speculate, Eric chose to protect his younger brother, perhaps understanding all too well the pressures they were both facing. Yet, while Jay-Z may have escaped the legal consequences, the psychological weight of that act would follow him for years to come. And it wasn't just a personal burden. The streets had taken notice. In the tough world of the Marcy Projects, that kind of violence earned respect. But it also deepened his connection to a world where crime was becoming an all-too-normal part of life. Fast forward to 1999. By now, Jay-Z was no longer just another kid from the projects. He had defied the odds, 
climbing his way out of Brooklyn's Marcy projects through sheer determination, raw talent, and an unrelenting work ethic. Throughout the 1990s, Jay-Z released several groundbreaking albums, starting with Reasonable Doubt in 1996, which solidified him as one of the most talented lyricists in hip-hop. His clever wordplay, sharp delivery, and authentic storytelling about the street life he came from resonated with fans across the world. By 1999, Jay-Z had become a household name in the music industry, with hit albums like Volume 2, Hard Knock Life, dominating the charts. He was no longer just a rapper. He was on his way to becoming an empire. But success didn't come easily. Jay-Z built his career while maintaining tight control over his music and business ventures. He co-founded Rockefeller Records to release his albums, ensuring that he wouldn't be beholden to major labels. It was clear that his approach to the music industry was as strategic as it was personal. Every move he made was about protecting his art and securing his place at the top. Amid his rise, Jay-Z crossed paths with Lance and Rivera, a music producer and executive. Lance had worked in the industry for years, and by the late 1990s, he had carved out his own niche as a music mogul, founding Entertainment Records. The two shared mutual respect for each other's success, but their relationship was also tied to business, a partnership that had been mutually beneficial. Rivera had been a trusted figure within Jay-Z's circle for some time. However, in the music industry, trust is everything. And where trust is broken, the repercussions can be severe. That year, Jay-Z found himself in the middle of a bitter confrontation at the Kit Kat Club in Manhattan. Jay-Z had been working tirelessly on his next album, Volume 3, Life and Times of S. Carter. For him, this album represented not only his growth as an artist, but his continuing evolution as a businessman. The stakes were higher than ever, and his reputation as one of hip-hop's elite was on the line. So. When tracks from the unreleased album were leaked to the public, Jay-Z was furious. Months of hard work, tracks that were meant to cement his legacy, were suddenly out in the world before their time. It didn't take long for rumors to swirl about who was behind the leak. All signs pointed to Lance Rivera, the very man who had been a close associate in the industry. Whether the leak was intentional or a mistake, Jay-Z saw it as the ultimate betrayal. For a man who had fought tooth and nail to get where he was, this was more than a business misstep. It felt personal. Rivera had allegedly profited from Jay-Z's unreleased music by distributing it ahead of time, undermining months of planning and hard work. And in the high-pressure world of music, where reputations are made and lost in moments, Jay-Z's anger boiled over. In a fit of rage, Jay-Z confronted Rivera at the Kit Kat Club that night, accusing him of leaking his upcoming album. Tensions flared, and what began as a heated argument quickly escalated into violence. Emotions overtook reason, and in the chaos of the moment, Jay-Z drew a knife and injured Rivera in the stomach. It's unclear whether Jay-Z had brought the weapon with him, but the act seemed impulsive, fueled by a sense of betrayal. As Rivera fell to the floor, reeling from the injury, Jay-Z fled the scene before the authorities arrived. The next day, he turned himself into the police. But conflicting accounts from witnesses and Rivera's own downplaying of the incident led to Jay-Z avoiding serious legal repercussions. He ultimately pled guilty to a lesser charge, a close call that could have derailed his entire career. Unlike the incident with his brother, this time the law did get involved. But these incidents left a mark on him. They were reminders that no matter how far he had come, his past was never far behind. As we look at Jay-Z today, a billionaire, a business mogul, a philanthropist, it's easy to forget the darker chapters of his life. But they're there, lingering in the background. The lesson here isn't just about crime and punishment, it's about growth, about using even the worst parts of our past to propel us forward. Jay-Z could have stayed on the path of violence, crime and destruction, but he didn't. He chose a different road, one that led him to become not just a rapper, but a symbol of resilience and redemption. In the end, it wasn't just the crimes he committed that defined him, it was the lessons he learned from them. 
And that, friends, is the heart of this story. Remember, every crime has a story, and every story has a lesson. 